Test one, two, test. One, two.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the West Side Athletic Complex on the campus of Western Connecticut State University for this evening's matchup between the Westfield State Owls and your Wolves of Westcom. A reminder to all fans tonight that the NCAA mascot and Westcom promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, or sexual comments, or other intimidating actions directed at official student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds to be removed from this site. Consumption or possession of alcohol or beverages and the tobacco rabbits are strictly prohibited. We also ask that fans do not stand along the fence at the bottom of the bleachers and stay off the playing surface at all times. Additionally, no pets are allowed in the stadium. We do thank you in advance for your anticipated cooperation. Enjoy tonight's game. Fans, at this time we ask that you would all please rise and direct your attention towards our nation's flag. As we honor America, the West Coast Spirit Band plays our national anthem.
Friday night live from the WAC, the West Side Athletic Complex on the West Side campus of Western Connecticut State University in very pleasant and seasonable theater, Connecticut. This is Westcon Football, Mark Stern of the Media Services crew, the great Scott, the prolific pooch, superstar, I am the sky, all on hand for this evening's festivities. It's conference time, MASCAC football time for the Wolves, who are looking for their first win of the campaign after a season opening loss to the Merchant Marine Academy. And they bring in the Owls of Westfield State, who are coming in at 0 and 2. Lost at home, lost on the road, and uh, both times they were they were struggling. So they're coming into this one looking to right the ship, and get things cooking after some rough outings. Wolves, after having a week off, looking to reload and start the conference season off on a very positive note. Our officials for this evening. Side judge will be Juan Harvey, the field judge Steve Berardi, the back judge Stephen Pascanatilli, Matt Peterson, the line judge, Jeff Avalone, the head line judge, the umpire Frank Ume, and the referee tonight is Chris Haddon. A very busy weekend here on the west side campus of Westcott. A volleyball's going on. The uh, Westcon Invitational, in fact, is underway. Westcon and Hunter colliding at the O'Neill Center, and that will continue tomorrow. Morrisville State around 10 a.m. And in the afternoon, Manhattanville at 4 o'clock. So busy weekend for volleyball here. And besides football tonight, There'll be men's soccer against Keene State LEC action for Coach Joe Mingacho's crew. That'll be at noontime at 1 o'clock. Women's tennis home to Salem State. And at 3, field hockey will be home to UMass Dartmouth. And then on Sunday, to keep the busyness going, Westcott women's soccer against Framingham State. Won't be going at 1 o'clock. Teams are now coming out onto the field. The Owls are out here wearing the road whites. Some blue trim. It's a sort of an owlish blue helmet and numbers. And the Wolves set to arrive will be wearing The deep blues with the orange and white trim and the white numbers. I know the captains are ready because we have to have a coin toss here. But the Wolves on Moss, not on the field just yet. Among the, among the Wolves captains, I see Rocky Davis out there, but I don't think Rocky's going to be in the lineup tonight. It's not just in the starting lineup. He's not really wearing the full uni right now, so that certainly has lost the notice man, Rocky Davis. The rest of the world's coming on out. The other captains are set for dress. Chad Blasky, they're running back out there. The coin toss. Pat Adams, the guy who has bounced back superiorly well from injury. And the quarterback, John Gillard. This 
is kind of a this is one of the longest coin toss discussions I've seen in quite some time. Westfield coming in, by the way. I mentioned they've been having some difficulties over the first two games. their opponents. Have been averaging nearly 50 points a game against them in their first two outings. So what are they? They're looking to contain and bounce back. Wolves got into a high scoring affair against Merchant Marine Academy. They gave up 50 points. They're open at 52-35, so they want to correct a few things. And as I said, start this conference season off absolutely positively on the right foot. has been filling in nicely here. Westfield starters are going to include the quarterback Colby Piers. Piers is a senior on a Milford mask, goes 6'2", 190. So far in the season, 28 of 54 with two interceptions. Team only really averaging 97 yards in the air over those first two games. He has thrown for three touchdowns, though. Well, Wolves, of course, we mentioned Captain Gilla. John Giller. That open game. Against the Merchant Marine Academy. Went 21 to 33. Was picked off once, but threw for 375 yards and four TDs. Wolves are going to be receiving to start this game. Lights are now on here at the West Side Athletic Complex. Cooper Harvey should be booting it away. Sends this one. Ooh. Took a bounce, dangerously went through some hands, but the Wolves are going to be able to at least bring it up toward the 20. They're going to place it at the 21. All right, Wolves offense besides Giller, QB, Chad Blasky, of course, the running back. Left tackle, Daniel Barry. Right tackle, Pat Adams. Left guard, Desmond Sampson. Right guard, Jordan Agosto, the center. Juan Burnett. Got three receivers right. Now a little bit of shifting going on. And Are we going to delay a game or a timeout getting called? No, it's going to be a timeout getting called. So ball's on to 21. It's going to be first and 10. Again, receivers stacked to the right.
Now the body's in motion. Gillick. And we got a flag down before this one got going. Well, so far, not pretty for you Friday night. It's against the Wolves, moving it to the 16. So it creates a first and 15. Let's do it again. Rodriguez in motion to the left side as one receiver. And now it's Blasky off the right side. Barrels up close to the 20. Blasky, of course, the running back. The receivers, you're going to see bodies coming in and out. Shake Rodriguez, number one. You see Zach Soriano, number 36. Julian Ferguson, number 11. Among others. Second and 11, pick up a four for Blasky. And bodies moving, flags down, and are the Wolves offside again? Defense for the Owls. The ends are Dylan Clark and Ethan Russell. The tackles, Dylan Zerblis and Cade Nelson. Linebackers, Cam Danahy, Tyler Cooley. Alec Rodriguez, the corners, Zach Allen and Marcus Allen Nesmith, strong safety, Kristen Julian and Max Margison, the free safety. Second and 16, after that one against the Wolves. Toss, far side, up to about the 23. For, is it Fergie? Nope, it's gonna be Troy Nicholas. Nicholas Troy. It'll be a third down and eight after that pickup. So Nicholas Troy on the reception. Drop back. Long, deep heave, and across the 50 and into Westfield territory. Uh uh. Owls. With the pickaroo. Pass hung up a little bit too long. Ball be at the 40 of the Owls. We're moving left to right across your screen, whatever that screen may be. Who's getting credit for that pick? So the pick in traffic. Well, for right now, we're going to say it's Dion, but we can't because it's not making sense. Here it's carry up to the 41, going to be a second down and nine. Offense for Westfield. Colby Pierce has his tailback, Jordan Smith, the wide receivers, Danny Farrell, Owen Thompson, Corey Jackson Jr., the tight end, Joe de Blasi. Hand off again up the middle, maybe a pickup of one or two. So Jordan Smith on the carry, creates a third and seven. The center is Sean Ferguson, right guard Gordon, Jordan Cogbill, left guard Gilberto Rodriguez, Sean Murray, the left tackle, the right tackle, Alvin Ivan. 
third down for the Owls here. Trying to take advantage of a Wolves turnover. Got the ball in good field position. And a pass incomplete behind the line of scrimmage. Intended for Jordan Smith. Wolves had it covered well, but it was just a drop to create a fourth and seven. So they'll have to punt it away. Owen Thompson, the punter. Miles Wilson came in strong on that play defensively. So it's fourth down at seven. There's another timeout. Wow. So 12.25 to go, we're scoreless. Now they're getting set to punt to the white. Owen Thompson back at his own 28-yard line. Low snap, gets it away. This one's going to be short, though. It's high, though, and may take an Owls bounce, and it will. Across the 20 and down to the 15-yard line, just shy of the 15. Wow. Talk about a gift. That was a high, short punt. But boy, did it take an Owls bounce. And it was so high, it gave the Owls plenty of time to come down for coverage. So the Wolves are going to be starting off just a scooch above their own 15. Giller has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Blasky off the right side, finds a nice hole, gets it up to the 25. First down, Wolves. The master blaster. Giving Giller a little more breathing room here with 12 minutes plus to play. Quarter number one at the whack. We're scoreless. Giller faked the throw, sent it up again. And this time, Owls are ready. So there really should be no game. Rigdon had come in. He's going to get shifted off the line right now, though. We're going to see Shake Rodriguez check in far right side. Three receivers to the right. Two receivers to the left. Giller looks sideline. Second and ten after no gain on the last running play. Protections there. Giller sees his receivers covered. Now throws on the run. Incomplete at the 50. And tended. For Nicholas Troy. Really solid coverage by the Owls because the protection was there for Giller, but the bodies were on the receivers. So now it's a third and ten. Looks like Ferguson to the left side as one receiver. Two off to the right. And we're going to have a flag. Are we going to have another? Offside or delay going on here? Bulls have been bitten a little bit here in the first quarter by that. 
Is it Mason Fung offside? It looks like it. Looks like that was the call. So makes it third and 15. Ball goes back to the 20. Giller out of the shotgun. Two receivers left, one right. The pursuit is tremendous. Giller trying to get away. He cannot. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Jump down, turn around, it's done. Alec Rodriguez, the linebacker, in on the stop. For the Owls. A fourth and 15, and the Wolves have to punt it away. Troy Pamacala will be coming on in. And a fair catch is called at the 50 by Christian Julian, a senior out of Hingham, Mass. So really, it only goes as, what, a 30-yard punt? And good field position for the Owls in this scoreless first quarter of play. Looking at the Wolves' D. Should be Kyle Jackson working his one end and Ambrose Richards at the other. Wow. Plow through for a loss. Jordan Smith, the tailback, got nowhere, suffered a three-yard loss back to the 47 of the Owls. So he got Kyle Jackson at one end, Ambrose Richards at the other. Jalen Janeo, the nose tack. Kevin Wood working the other tack. Linebackers, Miles Wilson, Corey Tihi. Nosa Uzamir, the corners, Malik Green, Tyon Grimes, second down, also Stiney. And again, Smith could not get going. The safeties, Deshaun Hardy Walker, Jaden Wolf. So it's going to be third and 12. They, they pick up a yard, but didn't get back to that original line of scrimmage. We'll see if Pierce is going to be throwing here. He's got two receivers left, one right. Looks far left where there's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Incomplete down at the 19-yard line. So the pass in the vicinity, but would have taken a little bit of acrobatics to haul it on in. Danny Farrell, the intended receiver for the Owls. So they'll be punting away again. Owen Thompson. This one is going to be taken at the 15. Cut in 20, 25. And spun with one hand. Out of bounds. Ouch. Alec Rodriguez. With the spinning tackle, if you will. Ball's at the 
So the Wolves are going to have it just shy of their own 30. Ball at the 29 for Giller and company. Blasky crunched. Pickup of maybe a yard at best. With 8 15 to go here in the scoreless first quarter. He just ran into a wall. So it'll be second and nine. Again, Blansky. No, they're going to toss it over the middle. Incomplete intended for Ferguson. Nice fake. Then Ferguson over the middle, but Westfield State had the coverage ready. Coach Pete Kowalski. Had a triangle sort of set up there. We had a flag down before a third and nine can even get cooking here. Ball gets moved back to the 24. It's uh, third down and 14. Giller tossing sideline complete. Ferguson at the 41. First down, Wolves. So it ends up being a 17 yard pass unofficially. side. Giller, man on the run, flagged down though behind the play. Giller was out at the 50, so it'd be a pickup of nine, but we're waiting for the penalty. And it's a hold on the wall, so the penalty is a bit of bugaboo for West County here in quarter number one with 7-10 still to play in this scoreless matchup. The hold, though, is going to move that play back and move it back into Wolves territory at the 40-yard line. Ball back to the 40-yard line. Back to the penalty, the first down and 11. And off Blasky. Gets it up to maybe the 43 or 44 yard line, depending on the placement. It looks like the 43. Well, it's going to be a second down and eight. Giller pressures on. He cuts up the middle and slides to the 50, just shy of the first down. Oh, 
Good keeper by Diller. Advances the ball. Six yards. The 48 yard mark. They were not generous with the spot at all. And it's going to put the Wolves three yards away from a first down. Giller has Ferguson to the left. Fakes the handoff. Blitz is on. Blocks are there. Giller on the run, throwing, incomplete. Had to get rid of it or take a sack. It's going to be a fourth and three. Another long discussion going on. Personal foul. Blocking below the waist. Offense number two. A blocking below the waist call against the Wolves. Correction. Number five. That's going to move the ball. To the Wolves 33. It's still going to be third down, but it's third down and a lot. Third and somewhere between 18 and 19 yards. Three receivers left. Geller, time to throw. He's going to run it anyway. Now we're going to get another flag. Geller, wobbly, long, deep pass, incomplete. Broken up by a nifty double team from the Owls. Give credit to Christian Julian, the strong safety, for getting a finger on that. But a flag in the offensive backfield. It's going to be fourth down. Penalty would have been against the Wolves. And will be against the Wolves. Ball goes back 10 yards to the 23 yard line now. Well, they, they're, they're going to take the penalty. Moves it. To about the 23. The Wolves just try to get some breathing room here. Across the 30 to the 32. Blansky on the carry. So it's going to be fourth down now. But I'll tell you, we've seen more flags in the United Nations here in the first quarter of play. At the whack, my friends. So they get some breathing room for their punter. Troy Pomacala should be sending it to the very active Christian Julian. Doing a fine job at safety so far this evening. And he's also been a return guy for them. But from my angle, can't be sure if it's. Yeah, it is Julian who's deep. 
And this one will be a fair catch at the 42. So neither time has he had to return anything, but made a clean, fair catch at his own 42. Again, good field position for the Owls in this scoreless first quarter of play. At the whack, Bart Pasterna, the media services crew with you. You got the great Scott, prolific pooch, superstar. Eye on the sky here, Sir David of Kingsley in the booth. Colby Pierce, complete to the near side by the West Ham bench, but it's not going to go very far with Corey Jackson Jr. getting doubled up. They'll spot the ball at the 43, so pick up a one, second down and nine. Three receivers right, one receiver left. And they'll send it off left tackle with Smith. The tailback, he gets across the 45. And they're yeah, going to place it at the 47, which will still put them about five yards shy of a first down. Third and five for the Owls. Pierce rolls right, throws. And are they calling it complete? They are at the 45 yard line. Danny Farrell was in the vicinity. Michael Foley. They look to run it up the middle. I see Corey Jackson check out as one of the receivers. Foley was the man on the reception, Farrell. Had flooded that area before as well, but now let's see if they keep it on the ground. Foley is back in and off to the right. No, they're keeping it on the ground. Bang, 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 cross the 40. Number 15, Jordan Smith again with the carry, powers ahead. Advances the ball to the 38 yard line. Third so they get the ball down. inside the 40 to the 38 of the Wolves. More than three yards to go for a first down. But the Owls on the move here. Pierce looking to throw. Pierce took too much time, and when he thought about running, got smushed back at the 38 yard line. Did he cough up the ball? That's a question. Who has possession? Wolves are trying to say they do. Was the whistle blown and Pierce already down, or do the Wolves have it on a turnover? Piers looking right side to throw and then was trying to go up the middle, but the ball may have been knocked out onto the ground, loose. We're waiting for possession to be determined here.
It's still going to be Owl's possession. Oh my. So there is a fumble. It does get recovered by Westfield. And the Wolves D is getting nailed for a delay of game. Wow. And the ball is getting pushed up inside the 40 to the 38 yard line of Westcon with a minute 15 to go in this scoreless first quarter. Now it's still going to be a fourth down. And they're sending out Owen Thompson, the punter. Looks like Dalton London deep. Dalton Moden looked like him back at the the 10 low snap and the boot de boot. Can they keep it inside the 10? They do. So the Owls do a good job on a punting game. Wolves would like to forget this first quarter. With so many flags, so many penalties, stymieing their efforts defensively, offensively. They're going to take over here with 46 seconds to play in the quarter. And inside the 10, their own 10. What did they say? He touched it before the 10. They're saying he touched it before the 10. So it'll be just a scooch above the 10 yard line. Either way, it was a good punting job by the Owls. Lasky spinning, turning 15, 20. Lasky carrying bodies. to the 27 yard line. Chad Blasky. Giving Giller some breathing room here as the first quarter's winded down. First and 10, Westcon. At their own 27. Killer drops back, Blitz is on, spun around, dropped down for a loss. Drop down, back at the 20. As the quarter comes to a close, we are scoreless. Westcott and Westfield State here at the WAC. Back with you in a moment. This is Westcott football.
field, West Don has the ball. Second and 15. Ball at the 22 yard line. And on the run, Wolves to start the second quarter. Taken far side after the sack to end the first quarter. We're scoreless in this Mascac Conference matchup. It's going to be a third and two. After that run. Geller for 14 yards. Wolves now moving left to right across your screen, whatever that screen may be. Up the middle on a third and two. Oh, you just know. That is running like a man possessed. Chad Blasky up to the 45 yard line. Got to love it. In case you just joined us, first quarter, a quarter full of penalties on the Wolves. They're hoping to bounce it back right here, right now. In the second quarter of play, they've been able to keep the Owls scoreless and keep them at bay. Chad off the left side, bangs his way to the midfield marker. See some changes coming in. Shake is coming in. Shakespeare Rodriguez checking in. Also, Zach Soriano off to the right side with Shake. It is a second down and six. Lasky off left side. First down and more. He's at the 40. 35. And down near the 30-yard line of the Owls. Oh, baby. The Chad Express. That's how it works best. Good blocking. And then... The master movements of the captain. So first and ten walls. Two receivers right, one left for Gillard. And that one goes off the left side across the 25 down to the 22. Cameron Holmes, the junior from Branford High, on that carry. And oh my! Spring and free. 20 15 down near the 12. They take it along the far side while the Wolves are moving on this drive. So a first and 10, it's at the 15 of the Owls. Geller. That will go for naught. So we're gonna have a false start against the Wolves. Ooh, that that penalty bug flew back into the stadium. Back. 
First down and 15 to go. First down and 15 for the Wolves. It's going to create a first and 15. The ball back on the 20 of the Owls. Geller looking to throw again. Zips this one to about the 10. But they'll say incomplete. Intended for Ferguson. Several white jerseys in the vicinity, including linebacker Cam Danahy was there. So it'll be second and 15. Up the middle with Blasky. He's at the 10 and inside it. So it should create a third down and about five. A third down and five to go for the Wolves. Ball on the 10. He won't get the greatest of spots, but it's still a third and five. Two receivers left, one right, but of course, Lansky in the backfield. Gillard rolling right, throws on the run. Oh, baby, complete! Julian Ferguson. Right toward the near corner. And Gillard zipped it right there for a 10-yard TD pass. Wolves first on the board, 944 to play in the half, leading six zip. Getting that one. Weedman. And the kick is up. And through and true blue. Seven zip Wolves leading the Owls of Westfield. Geller with that nice throw. Well, where's the that's the incomplete pass we're seeing there. But with that nice throw to Ferguson. It's his fifth touchdown pass of the season. There you go. Defender down. Fergie up. Fergie in the end zone. Right there by the pylon. Look like J.J. Tauscher. Might have lost a step. Might have. And then tried to make up for it and went down. Wait a minute, kick off. Sends a line drive to about the seven yard line. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, solid return up near the 40. Christian Julian. So the Owls will have good field position, and there's certainly time on his first half clock to get something going. Wolves D, despite the Owls having some solid field position during the course of this first half, Wolves D has been able to come up big. I'm just hoping we're past the penalty phase of this game and can, can move on to some football football. Hey. 
Here's bounces one off a teammate's head. The ball gets scooped up all the way back in an end zone, but uh, they're just calling it incomplete. Now, if you bounce it off of somebody's head and somebody catches it, different story. Hits the ground, incomplete. But rule of thumb is follow the bouncing ball anywhere. And that's what everybody did. So it goes as a incomplete pass. And kids at home don't try that. That wasn't a designed play by any means. Handoff. They get some room. And are able to bring it. Bring it up to the 42. Up to the 42. So on the return, Julian had gone out of bounds. That's why the ball got spotted where it got spotted. They pick up some yardage here close to seven, so we'll call it third and a long three for the Owls here in their own territory. Pierce gets time. Now he gets hit and throws it deep and new. No peak off for you. But a good try, good try by Mike DeFelice. So it'll be a fourth and a long three. Will Brewster. Was the intended receiver on that play. Bulls had good coverage. Oh my. The coverage on the special teams. Oh, so good. And Owen Thompson, the punter, is gobbled up. Gobbled up. Inside his own 30. Was that Miles or Daimler? I'm going to guess it was Miles on that play. They're going to place the ball at the 30. First and 10 Wolves with an opportunity here. Maybe a yard pickup for Blasky. Chad with just under 90 yards here in the first half on the ground. So second and nine. Tosses, left side, complete. First down and more, 20, 15. So it's going to be Rolo on the reception. They'll have a first and 10 at the 17. Blasky. Blasky will pick up a few. Blasky. 
It's going to be second down and six to go. They'll give him four. Place it at the 13, second and six. Two receivers left. Giller out of the shotgun, gives to Chad off the right side. Should pick up three, and that'll create a third and three. Six minutes to play here in the first half. Seven nothing. Wolves lead the Owls in this Mascac matchup at the West Side Athletic Complex. Giller again to chant around the right side, but bursting on in the Owl D, Tyler Cooley, the linebacker. Cooley, a junior out of Randolph, Mass. Should be a loss on the play. At the very least, line of scrimmage, so it's going to create a fourth and three. And they will go for it. With five minutes to go in the half. Giller, two receivers left, drops back. Looking, looking, finds a hole up the middle. Can he at least pick up the first down? Scurrying, diving! Giller! In the end zone! Welcome to the Wolf Town. John Gillen with a rushing TD. That is John's first rushing TD of the season. We've been the kick. It is through and true blue. 14 0 Wolves take the lead of 4.43 to play in the first quarter, in the first half. Here at the WAC. Giller on the run, looking for the first down at the very least. But he gave up the body when he saw a little bit more could be achieved. And he made it into the end zone. He's thrown for one. He's rushed for one. Wolves right now with nearly 200 yards in total offense in the first half. While the opposition... I've got them for less than 20 at this point in total yards in the first half, just about. They've had great field position, which is which gives you that optical illusion that there was more out there. 12 yards total. The kickoff, it's going to be a touchback. Anthony getting the job done in solid fashion this evening. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 25 for the Owls here. As they look to try and play a little catch up. And still first half time there, 443. But it's a team that has struggled offensively over their first two games. We'll see what they can put together on this drive. They'll send it around the left side. Not going to work. 
and see where forward progress gets them. Some offensive line but are down. Jordan Smith the tailback shaking his head. Don't look like Christopher Green, a reserve offensive lineman, went down, but he went back, went right back into the line up there. So they've got a second and eight. They're going to give him forward progress of about a yard and a half. Toss on the run. Is it complete? Yes, they say. Up around the 33 yard line, it'll still put them a couple of yards shy of a first down. Six yard gain. Third down and two to go. Connor Schlittler, junior out of East Walpole, Mass, on the reception. On third and two, they keep it on the ground and are denied. It'll bring up a fourth down. Here he by number 15, Jordan Smith. No so Jordan play. Smith getting Rolls stopped Rolls. right there. Rolls D comes up, does his job one more time here in the first he half. Now the last time they punted, Owen Thompson ended up getting enveloped by the Wolves special teams. Wolves ease up a bit on the rush right there. That punt's going to be taken at the 35 and across the 40, 45, midfield. It's running time down the near sideline. The blocking is there, and a touchdown! <laughs> Beautiful blocking, no flags down. Five-yard return. And the kick by Weedman is up through and true blue. 21 zip Westcott in there. Yeah, special teams doing it before by ramping up the punter. Owen Thompson here, his punt gets returned for 65 yards as special teams runs it with proficiency. Surge Lagarde there. A freshman. A native of Stanford, Connecticut. And again, Wheatman makes it a touchback situation for the Owls, who will only have 2.36 on the clock and start their own 25 on this drive. If you could do us a favor and keep an eye out and look around, we're looking for a lost cell phone. 
and black case, blue iPhone 13. Once again, we're looking for a missing phone. If you happen to look around and see if you can find So a after this one being scoreless for an enormous amount of time, security will let you through. Once again, black case, the Wolves have exploded. So do us a favor and take a look out for that. Thank you. And the final portion of this second quarter. You put up 21 points. They're on first and 10. They'll pick up a gain of seven. Great a second and three. Forget about it. They were thinking of tossing it near side. Jacob Swinehart was waiting there with the Wolves D bursting through. So instead of it being an opportune situation, going to be a third down and at least at least five, maybe six. Here's running right side and throwing on a run incomplete to the sidelines, his sidelines. So it's a fourth and five of the minute 29. They got a, exactly a minute and six seconds of offense in on that series. And we'll have to boot it away. To the Wolves. The Hungry Wolves, who have so, shown an insatiable appetite in the final portion of this first half. Owen Thompson back at his own 15. Fair catch. Bobble. But the Wolves will have possession. They should have possession at their own 29. So, Lagardere, Serge. Might have lost it in the lights. But he got on it very quickly. So, minute 18 to play. Wolves first and 10 from there. What was I saying? The 28, actually the 30... 34. 34 is where he fell on. Zip over the middle. Complete. Up near the 50. Soriano on the reception. And it's going to be a first down. We'll see Rodriguez along the near side. Two receivers left. Hiller dropping back, pressure's on. Now he has to roll right and throws that one to Blasky. And he makes the catch at the 40, I want to say the 42 yard line of the Owls. Create about a second and one, 49 seconds to go. Giller blitz is on. He has to run it. Gets across the 40 and gets tackled. Lost the ball. Scooped it right back up. Got pursued and pursued well. Tyler Cooley who's had a very active first half. The linebacker. But Giller picks up the first down. 39 seconds to go in the half. Wolves up 21 zip but looking for more before halftime. Going to get a timeout called here. 
So that will be that. For the moment, I think we're going to see some other bodies checking in and some shifting. And the lineup for the Wolves right now. Ferguson will be out there as one receiver. Ferguson's along the near side right now. Nicholas Troy also along the near side. Giller was looking across the middle and throws complete to the 22. Whistle should blow the play dead. It's Zach Soriano on the reception. Giller was looking over the middle. Soriano cut from the far side and just kept on going. And Giller followed him for the completion. First and 10, 20 seconds to go. And a pass out of bounds incomplete as Giller was on the run. His receivers all well covered. Clock will stop with 17 seconds to go. You have to remember the Wolves have, uh, have Anthony as their kicker. And a dandy, so... Going for a field goal, they don't have to go for all the marbles. But they'd love to tack on a touchdown, don't get me wrong. Giller throwing toward the end zone, almost picked off. A threesome on Ferguson. Pass intended for number 24. Correction, make that number 11. That was Julian Ferguson. It was intended for a pause and completes. Brings up. So, yeah, almost, almost had a pick off there. Tauscher, another guy who's been active for these Owls on D. 12 seconds to go. Geller. We got flags. Pass again intended for number 11, Julian Ferguson. So the flags that came up early and often in this one come back toward the end of this half. There's four ticks on the clock. They bring on Anthony for a field goal attempt. It looks that way. Out a field goal at that. It's going to be Giller with a third and 21 because the penalty moved them back. And now we got another timeout. Four seconds to go as Giller came out. Yeah, the, the penalty moved them back further to the 33 of the Owls. If you are going to attempt a field goal, 
you're talking about a 50 yard attempt. J Dog is here. J Dog, how did volleyball go? How did volleyball go? They fell 3 1 to Hunter. But the invitational continues tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. Just double checking. There will be more volleyball. The Westcott Invitational. They fall to Hunter tonight, 3 1. Morrisville State coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. And at 4 tomorrow, it'll be Manhattanville. All right, so instead of a 50-yard field goal attempt, it'll be Gillard on a third and 21. Seeing if they can pull off a little magic right here. Gillard drops back. Has to roll left, right, throws on the run, and just throws it to the sidelines as time runs out. And we end up with a 21-zip Wolves lead here at the WAC. Yes, it indeed was a first half marred by penalties. No doubt about it. And that slowed the Wolves down, but the Wolves D, despite seeing the Owls get some good field position, the Wolves D really came through. Frustrating. Piers, the QB. 4-9, 24 yards. They're going to run another play. It's not done. Well, just, just when you're about to do a wrap-up on a half. It was a penalty against the D. One more play on time to play. It's going to move the ball up to the 28, and now Weedman will attempt a 45-yard. So the penalty on the Owls gives the Wolves a chance to tack on three, but again, it'll be a 45-yarder here. Well, <laughs> there was there was another timeout called. Is anybody keeping track of these timeouts? Have we, have we used enough timeouts for about five games already? Between both teams? Oh, my. Well, Anthony, to try that 45-yarder right here, right now. Alex Gonzalez, the holder. Shaw with the long snap. The kick is up. It's high, and it is no good. So the half does indeed now come to a close. The score stays 21 0. Wolves. Gillard ends up going to eat a 14 one pickoff. He threw for 94 yards and one touchdown. But he also ran for 43 yards and a TD. And Blasky is just four yards shy of a 100 yard game. On some 15 carries. Julian Ferguson, by the way, was the man on the receiving end. But the Wolves have seen five different receivers. 
be utilized in that first half. Ferguson joined Soriano with two apiece, uh, receptions apiece. Rollo and Blansky each with one. But it's Ferguson with the TD reception for Westcon. There was a punt return for a TD. Serge Lagardin with a 65 yard return for a TD. Pierce went four of nine, 24 yards passing. But when you look at the overall total yardage, the Wolves defense has done a tremendous job here because really, um, you're talking about 25 total yards for the Owls offense between rushing and passing in that first half. And Smith, their top rusher with 21 yards. So it's Wolves 21, the Owls zip. We'll be back with you for the start of the second half here at the Westside Athletic Complex. Bart Pasterna for the media services crew saying this is Westcon football.
back to action in 13 minutes. 13 minutes of the second half kick off.
Welcome back, everybody. Second half of play getting set to be underway at the Westside Athletic Complex. This is Westcott Football Park Pasterna. Media Services crew with you. We've got the great Scott, prolific pooch, the superstar, eye in the sky, Sir David of Kingsley in the booth. And we're ready for the second half of action. 21 0. The Wolves lead this one. And I got to tell you, yeah, so many penalties called early on in this game. It's hard to believe only 11 in total, but 10 of those on the Wolves for some 70 yards. Yet, the West Dean has played exceptionally well, and the offense was starting to get things cooking. You had Giller with a TD toss to Julian Ferguson of 10 yards. Giller himself on a scamper into the end zone for a TD. And a special teams, which has really shined tonight. A 65-yard return on a punt by Serge Lagardere. Not to mention the other things that special teams has done to punter Owen Thompson on the evening. It's been, uh, been a tough night for him, but you can't blame him. The West Coast special teams has really come through. And the Wolves, as a Toto have had nearly 100 yards on the ground from Chad Blasky, their premier running back. They've gotten 140 rushing yards to just one for the Owls. And in passing yards, 94 to 24 is how it stands. So 200 plus yards on offense for the Wolves and just 25 for the visiting Owls in this game. The Wolves will be kicking away to start things off. Anthony Wheatman will be seeing a large connection collection of return people. Back there. This one will go to about the two yard line. 20, 25, 30. Get a few extra out of the return that they would have and they let it just bounce into the end zone. So that's where the owls will start at their own 30. I think that's where the official will end up marking it. So you're marking it just shy. They're going to mark it at the 20. Uh, just, just shy of the 30. 28 yard line. It'll be first and 10. For the Say line. step down at the 28. Okay. I'll try to send it up the middle. like Gabe Fernandez has taken over a QB. He's seen a little time over the first couple of games this season. Fernandez one of two passing coming into this game. And uh, he's rushed for about 10 yards, but certainly it's been Piers who has played the bulk of time over the first Two and now two and a half games. Fernandez rolling right, gonna get dropped for a loss. Marvelous pursuit. Troy Pomacala got those legs, and down goes Gabe Fernandez. So a second and seven is going to turn into a third down and 14 as a result. Fernandez looking to throw, rifles one to the far side, incomplete. The 
Thompson the punter is far side. So it's going to be a fourth and 14. Margardier should be deep at his own 40 yard line. And we got flags down on the stamp. I told you, officially, 11 penalties called the first half, 10 of those on the walls. But this one is going to push the Owls back inside their own 20. Should create a fourth and 19. It'll move Surge up to his own 45. We'll see if they put the heat on Thompson here, and they do, but he gets it away. It's a bouncer, and it'll bounce back from the 50 into Owls territory. At the 49 yard line. So the, the Wolves are going to have good field position with a 21 zip lead, 13 15 to play, quarter number three here at the whack. So the change in QB wasn't able to spur the Westfield State offense. Giller back out at quarterback for the Wolves. Sends it up the middle. Lansky's going to make it to the 45-yard line of Westfield State. Maybe they give him closer to the 44, so pick up a five. Second down and five. You have one receiver right. Giller. Again with Blasky getting good blocking. He's across the 40 and has the first down at the 37 yard line of Westfield State. Shake Rodriguez checking in. Zach Soriano checking in. Those receivers off to the left side. A little jumping by Westfield. But not a total infraction. Blasky around the right tackle. Gets it to the 30. Should have picked up about seven on that play. Several owls in on the stop, including Cam Danahy, the linebacker. But the initial big hit was from the defensive tackle, Dylan Zerbliss. I think he lost his helmet on that play. So second and three. Ferguson. As the receiver to the right. Quick toss incomplete at the 25 yard line. Good pass intended for number 36. Intended for Soriano. Falls incomplete. So it'll be third down and three. Giller comes up to the line and comes back to the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Giller to the left. Giller throws on the run, complete to a wide. And I do mean wide open. Brought in by number 36, Soriano. Plenty of yards being ball all the way down to the 14-yard line. That'll be first down and 10. He could have put down a chair. 
read a newspaper or signed on to his tablet. Nifty toss for a first down, first and ten. Hand on, Blasky. Get bottled up after a couple. Blasky can take your hand off. He gains two. Second down and eight. So it'll be moved up to the 12-yard line. Second down, eight yards to go. Ten and a half to play here in the third quarter. Wolves up 21 zip. And just about knocking on the door here. They've pulled into the driveway. Two receivers right. Soriano across the middle. Giller has to roll left, and he may just have to try to escape. At best, he got across the initial line of scrimmage. And we'll make it a third down and ten to go. Back from the original line of scrimmage. So maybe third and a long nine, a loss of one on the play, a loss a little more than a one. Two receivers left, two receivers right. The pressure is on, toss incomplete. Pass on the far sideline. Pass ended up going high, far side, intended for Julian Ferguson. Went off his fingertips, but it was uh, it was going to be an awkward attempt at corralling that one. It'll create a fourth down and ten at the 15-yard line of the Owls. Wolves are going to go for it here. Leading 21 zip. Again, two receivers left, two receivers right. Shaking Soriano on the near side. Gill is looking left side, and that one is complete at the four-yard line. It should be a first down. Or no, are they saying incomplete? Looked like one receiver, uh, one official said complete. Like the and then another indicated the incomplete or shy of the first down. So the Owls are going to take over. So it's, it's shy of the first down is what it is. That's how it plays out. So the Owls deep in their end, try to run it to get a little more room. Not going to happen right there with Jordan Smith on the carry. Smith, the junior running back out of Coventry. Right here in the Nutmeg State. He has certainly taken his lumps today. May have gotten about a yard and a half on that. Incomplete. Wolves put on great pressure. And then the attempted toss far side. Goes for naught. Fernandez on the run, takes a shot right before he released it. And Same play by number four, Gabriel Fernandez. He finds a receiver, number 13, Corey Jackson Jr. To the pass, they do get it up. First down and 10 for the Owls. 
to the 18-yard line. Man, did he take a shot. Corey Jackson Jr. on the reception. Well, he certainly paid a price for getting that first down. Now he throws it the pressure on, and again it's complete. Corey Jackson Jr. up to the 35. That'll be another first and 10 for the Owls right here. Trailing 21 zip, trying to get something going in the third quarter against the home team Wolves. Owen Thompson is off to the left side as a receiver. Three receivers stacked to the right side. We got a flag as Fernandez doing a lot of head bobbing on the count. They'll get pushed back on a false start. So the ball placed at their own 30. And it's first and 15 for the Owls here. They either have or are pretty close to getting more yardage on this drive than they did the entire first half. Fernandez on the run, sliding. But did he slide too late? He goes down. He's hurt. We've got flags being thrown. We got a QB down. The ball sprung loose. Now, granted, this is when you got to sit back and say, when did he begin the slide? When did the slide start? And he was going full speed ahead, then decided to duck down. I don't know how you could ask any player or how any player could possibly stop on a dime. Well, Fernandez is down. And I think he's going to get up of his own accord. He will. But he'll be shaken up and head to the sideline, so he may see Piers returning here as the QB. Wasn't yardage really gained on that play. Ball's currently being placed at the 30. And I really don't see how anyone could get penalized on that play. On the, on the Wolves side, most certainly, unless they were calling something else. But that'll be another lengthy chat. Do we have a coach out on the field? Can, can you have that without a timeout? And now the, the Westcott staff will come out. The officials clearly <laughs> feeling the need to either have a kumbaya moment or just Want to make sure they get in detail this call down and conveyed properly to the coaches. I don't see how you could penalize the Wolves. After the play, close to the foul, unnecessary rushing, defense, number, number, number 95. 
un unnecessary roughness. Second and 15. So both teams get nailed for unnecessary roughness because what happens is after the slide that wasn't really a slide play with the ball popping blues, I'm guessing far side, some tempers flared, and each team cited for unnecessary roughness. Those penalties offset. The down ends up counting. We get a second and 15, and all of this took a great deal of time. A heave, a hole, and incomplete, and no flag down. Pass intended for Michael Foley. Ty on Grimes with the coverage. Here's set one out there in the one on one coverage. Just floated a bit too much. And oh my! The D breaks in. The pass is broken up. There's no fumble. It was clearly the passing motion, but the play totally broken up. So third and 15 becomes fourth and 15. Wolves defense does it again. They have a 21 zip lead to the Wolves with 7.02 to play in quarter number three. Just marvelous work there again. Kevin Wood and others. And a very busy Owen Thompson. Will be punting again from his own 15. Pressure's on. He gets it away. Gardere lost it. Flag is down. Ball's at the 42. Wolves should have it. And this ball is picked up by number 31. For the Wolves. And so. Still so, done picked up the loose ball. Penalty after the play. It looked like Dylan Dunn was the man who ended up falling out of ball. Done? Yeah, it was done. Okay. And it will be another UN emergency meeting being called by the officials here. Lagardere has had trouble with the last two punts, and you don't know if it's the lights going on, but he's had trouble with the last two punts after returning one 65 yards for a TD. Unfortunately, the freshman Dylan Dunn out of Holy North Belmore, New York, there. Return team, number 48. After the play, 13 five. Late hit on the ticket team, number 42. Both fouls will be a fourth. First down, West Tom. So we have offsetting personal fouls again. Uh, you heard about penalties as they sort that out. And we just want to remind you that at the start of the fourth quarter, we will be calling. We're still waiting for placement of the football. The will take on $190. It's. Right now it's at the 45, and I guess it's staying there. All righty then. I'm afraid to even look as to. We've got to be up to about 15 penalties, even with offsetting stuff or whatever. 15 penalties between the two teams. So it's going to be first and 10. Bulls in their own end. Send Blasky. Off the right side, he cuts it inside, got across the 50, and to a first down for the Wolves at the 44-yard line of the Owls. 
Jake Rodriguez heading out there as a receiver far and left. Appears to be Soriano near side. Now Shake will join him there. So that'll be a first and ten. Quick pass incomplete intended for Ferguson. Pass intended for Ferguson falls incomplete. Second pass would have been right at the line of scrimmage. Ferguson had just come in and Soriano had checked out, but now Soriano's back in. And we'll see Espo check out Nick Esposito. Lasky behind some blocking. And then he just pushes forward to get it all the way down to the 35 yard line of the Owls. Depending on the spot. Another thing is the officials have not been, let's say, yeah, I don't want to use the word generous. Uh, just say spot on with the spotting tonight. It's going to be a third and a short two. There goes Blasky off the left side, finds a hole. Deacon, shake it, bake it, and he moves it for the first down and more inside the 20. To about the 17. Chadster, the master blasker. He's got himself a 100-yard night. But we have another flag. Huzzah. Correction. First down. So 5.27 to go into third. Ball gets moved back to the 35-yard line. Killer drops back. The pursuit and the heat is on. He's rolling right. Is he going to throw or keep it? He's going to keep it and lose at least a yard to the 36. Good coverage by the Owls. And they had the pursuit in there as well. Dylan Zerbalis, the defensive tackle. Second and 11. Two receivers left, one right. It's Ferguson on the right side. Lasky up the middle, big hole, and he just plows through the bodies. Flag down as he made it to the 20. Oh my. That's a 15 yard pickup that's going to get called back, right? Clock is stopped with 419 to play in the third. Holding. Awesome. And they're calling holding. Now, here's the thing. Didn't that flag come in awfully late? Oh, we got that's because there were more than one flag. So it's still going to be second down and 11. Second down, second down and 11 for the Rose. 
as we have more penalties that offset. So there was a penalty. Then there was a second flag. I did not see the first flag. Saw the second one that looked like it was being thrown late. Anywho, second and 11. Wolves in Owls territory at the 36 yard line. Soriano left side. Gillard, great pursuit, throws with bodies on him. And is it going to go incomplete? Far side around the 20. Intended for shake. So it'll be third and 11. See more bodies shift in and shift out. Rolo just checked out. Ferguson near side, two receivers left. Geller, quick pass. That one may have been a shoelace catch at best by Fergie. It'll put the ball at the 34 yard line. It's only really a pickup of two to create a fourth down and nine. And they go for it here. Leading 21 zip. Killer getting protection. Throw long and deep, and this one is caught the end zone touchdown. <laughs> Deshaun Allen. 34 yard deep pass. One on one coverage. And the Wolves take a 27 zip lead with 2.59 to play. Waitman to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, through, and true blue. It's 28 zip Westcott. The freshman from White Plains, New York. Deshaun Allen. A 35-yard reception. Geller with another fine toss. His line gave him the protection. And he found the one-on-one -on -one he could go after. So the Wolves with 28 unanswered points in this ball game. And Anthony gets set to boot it away. Multiple return guys. I'm going to bet that one of them is Christian Julian because I don't think he's had a minute off this evening for the Owls. Waitman sends this one into the end zone touchback. So with 2.59 to go in the third, Wolves leading 28 0. And they will, they will, they will. It looks like facing Peters again. Fernandez went down with an injury. 
got hit. He was going to start to slide, but it was so bang, bang. He really didn't start to slide soon enough. And he left. So I think it's still going to be Pierce out there, but we got to double check. Nope. Fernandez back. He's back. And he throws long and deep. Down the far side. That was not to be. It'll be second down and 10 for their own 25. So Fernandez is back. Apparently he's okay. And for the looks of that toss, he's got to physically be feeling okay. They've got two receivers right, two receivers left. They try to run it, and they get some breathing room across the 30 near the first down. And we'll see if Jordan Smith does get it. They're going to say first down. They're going to place it at the 35. And the receiver is off to the left for Fernandez. And he's going to go on the run. This time he does slide nice and early at the 39 yard line. So it'll be second down and six. Fernandez through to his right side, incomplete. It was a, we're both here at the same time, collision. Jackson Jr. getting his cage rattled. And Malik Green. Continues to have a very, very solid game. Third down and six. Fernandez rolling right. Gets protection, throws incomplete. Threw into traffic. Threw into traffic. Might have been better off trying to bootleg it himself. Instead, he hopped through, threw it into traffic. Wow, personal foul on the Owls for an illegal block. Wolves are going to decline it because it's fourth and six. You're down 28 zip, and you're in your own end. You're not going for it. They'll send Thompson out there again. Now, the last two times on the punt, Serge Lagardier has had a problem. New punter. So it's Adam Legere punting to Lagardier. Oh my, and the snap is fumbled, and then it's punt is blocked after he picked it up. The special teams got a little help from a bad snap, but they still took full advantage. Extra teams gets extra cookies tonight, baby. The special teams have really come through here for the Wolves. So Owen Thompson, who's been seeing double duty, receiving everything and punting, 
and his last two punts were actually muffed by Lagardere. Might have been the lightning, but you know, Wolves able to recover and, and nothing bad happened. But this one with his substitute, Leger, in there, it went nowhere. And the Wolves got great field position out of it. The ball on the 18 or so. They pick up four right here to make it second and six. So they advanced it from the 22 to the 18. Geller throwing end zone, but too far. Stops the clock with 29 to go in quarter number three at the WAC. So it'll be third down at six. Soriano returns. He'll go left side. Ferguson's going right side for Giller. It's Blansky around the left side. He's got the first down and more. Across the 10 down near the five. Brought down by a gaggle. Ten yard game on the play. Of Owls. Ten yards will be good for West Ham. First down and 10. So 18 seconds in counting. First down and 10. After the Blasky run. Shad with 150 plus yards on the ground. On the seven yard line and let the clock run down on the quarter. Wolves lead 28 to zip here at the WAC. We'll be back with you in just a moment for this final quarter of this MASCAC matchup. Westcon 28, Westfield State. Zip, this is Westcon football. Tonight's winning ticket, 4 2 1 1 0 9 3. Again, winning ticket, 4 2 1 1 0 9 3. 50 50 raffle. 4 2 1. 1 0 9 3. You have that ticket, make your way towards the press box. Uh, Fourth quarter here at the WAC. Westcon 28, Westfield State Zip. Bart Pastern and the Media Services crew with you. Wolves defense to been so fine tonight. Blasky, right side, Blasky to the end zone. Hello, Chad. Welcome to the Wolf Den. It's 34 zip on the Blasky seven yard scamper. The master Blasker. Unofficially with 170 yards on the day. On the ground. Big Wheatman attempting the extra point. Wheatman on for the extra point. 
And the kick is up and through True Blue. 35 nothing. So the Wolves have matched their offensive output from their first game. That loss to the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Difference in this one, goose egg on the board for the opposition here at the WAC in this conference opener. Defense has done a fine job, and, and Westfield has had some solid field position at times during the course of this game. Penalties helping to create those situations. Special teams has done a darn good job, and the, the offense has overcome some penalty issues to make it a 35-zip game. Giller, 12 to 23, 156 yards, two TDs. He's also run for a touchdown. He has some 33 yards on the ground here tonight. Blasky with 170 on the ground and a touchdown. So it's 35 zip, 14.54 to play. Waitman sends this one back to about the four-yard line. Owls will try to return it, get it to about the 24-yard line. That's it. Curtis Dion. Let's see what they spotted to say his knee went down, I think. They should put it shy of the 25. Well, they're putting it just shy of the 25. A very favorable spot. And it will end up being a 20-yard return. So the Owls moving left to right. Fernandez still in there at QB. He came on in the second half, had a leave after getting knocked down with an injury, but bounced back. And he scrambles to bring this one up to the 31. Second and four. Smith on the run. Smith is stopped, and not before picking up the first down. He gains the lever now. Good for another owl first down. He'll get it up to the Owls' 47-yard line. So it'll be first and ten from there. Well, send two receivers right, no, three now, right? One off to the left. And they'll run it around the left side with Smith, get some good blocking, and he's able to push it further into Wolves territory inside the 30. Clearly, this is their best drive of the half of the game. Yeah, another first down and 10 for the Owls. I'll put it at the 30. So they haven't been doing anything on the ground. Suddenly, bang, bang here on this drive, down 35 zip. They get it moving, ball placed at the Wolves 30. Jacob Swinehart is off to the left side as one receiver. And this time, the Wolves just smell out the run. Got a body down along the line. Sean Ferguson, the center, went down hard, and he is not getting up quickly. Should be a loss on the play. 
But there's going to be some trainer's attention for the center, Sean Ferguson. Both teams will head to the sidelines right here. It just didn't look good. And the play got busted up rather quickly, so the clock will stop with 12.40 to play. The Wolves up 35 to nothing. A reminder. Lots of things going on on Westcon's west side athletically over the course of the weekend. Tonight, as a matter of fact, at the O'Neill Center, Westcon Invitational for volleyball started up. Wolves fell to Hunter College. 3-1. That's going to pick up tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. When the Wolves face Morrisville State at the O'Neill. Then at 1 o'clock, there's women's tennis against Salem State. And here at the Westside Athletic Complex itself, It'll be a noontime men's soccer matchup, a conference matchup against Keene State. And at 3 o'clock, an LEC field hockey matchup against UMass Dartmouth. And of course, on Sunday at 1, Wisconsin women's soccer returns. And Framingham State will provide the opposition. It's all happening here on Westcon's west side during the course of the weekend. The injury timeout is over. Fernandez trying to move the ball and I don't know what that was. I mean, it's a pass. It gets batted down, but what, what was the thinking process going into that? And I think Fernandez's coach wants to know as well. It's going to be third and 13. I think Noah Will, looks like Noah Will came in for Sean Ferguson at center for the Owls here. Third and 13. And at the Wolves, 33. Fernandez drops back, zips it over the middle, complete, but shy of the first down. Complete the Jacob Swinehart. But no sooner did he catch it than he was submarined. It'll put the ball at the 26 yard line. But make him three yards shy of the first down. Fernandez throwing, lofting it, incomplete. They were hoping for a flag on some interference, but there really wasn't interference. It's two guys going for a, a floater in the air. Pass just floating up from Michael Foley, a senior receiver. Wolves just had him covered. And they got to turn it over on downs. That'll be first and 10 for the Wolves on their own 26 yard line. A toss left side, it's complete. Across the 30, 35, 40, and dragging the bodies up near the 45-yard line. Oh, 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 my. It's um, rather Alex Gonzalez just taking the bodies with him. Alex, who is a on the special teams as a holder, contributing right there. We've seen Blasky do it tonight, but uh, 
man, oh man. Gonzalez took uh, quite a few bodies with him as he picked up that first down. So Wolves at their own 45. They do have a Westcon player down. Look like Des Sampson, the left guard, coming off. Got up of his own accord, but he's certainly looking a little bit sore. Might be Dulac checking in. 71, Dulac checking in. All right. Lansky with the fake, Giller with the keep, across he slid, past the 50, but we got a flag in the offensive backfield. It's going to be holding. On Mason Fong. Wolves during a hundred yards. Well, nearing 100 penalty yards in this one. Wow, body thrown out of bounds. Blasky. Um, don't know about that. Don't know how close to the line or past the line that uh, shot was. Yeah, it's going to be an unsportsmanlike on the D. There had to be. If you're going to make all these other calls, you got to make the one that was obvious. Now, I'm blocked by the players as to how close to a line something was happening, but something did not look quite right. And the word unsportsmanlike comes to mind. So it's going to be a first down. The ball is going to move into Owl's territory at the 43-yard line of Westfield State. Long, deep pass, far side incomplete. A one-on-one. -on -one. And it gets broken up. Alec Rodriguez looked like he was in the coverage. Lori Mazza to the press box. Lori Mazza to the press box, please. So it'll be second down and 10. Geller gets protection, sends it long deep for Ferguson in traffic. Julian all the way down to the three yard line. That's a 40 yard pass play, babies. Owls had coverage, but guess what? The needle got threaded, and Ferguson made the catch. First and goal from just inside the three-yard line. Wolves up 35 zip, 10 minutes to play, and they're knocking on the door here. The give, last game. And 
it's 41 zip. So they complete the drive with no doubt the aid of a penalty. But they got it done on the ground, got it done in the air. Giller to Chad and the master blaster puts it into the end zone for six more. Extra point. It is up and it is good. Through and true blue. Wolves 42. Owls Zipola. With 9.51 to play here at the whack. Westcott in control. They've outdone them in the passing game four to one in terms of yardage here tonight. Four to one really in rushing as well in terms of yardage. And somebody, somebody will correct me on the math, but right now it looks like the Wolves have got over 600 yards in total offense in this game. Let's throw in a 65-yard punt return for a TD by special teams. So we'd better kick off. This one will just bounce its way into the end zone touchback. And the Owls will take over at their own 25-yard line. They have been stymied this evening in virtually every turn. And even their most impressive drive One where you thought, well, maybe here's where the goose egg comes off the board. Nope. Nothing has worked out here this evening for Westfield State. Fernandez throwing toward midfield. Does that one get corralled or is it incomplete? Incomplete. So Fernandez send it up the middle. Maybe get a yard or two with Jordan Smith. Smith with about 66 yards on the ground here this evening at the WAC. Smith gets stopped once more. Third down coming up here. Fernandez tried to just sweep pass it left side. It's incomplete. Intended for Curtis Dion, the reserve tailback. And fourth down coming up. We're going to have to punt it away, and we'll see if the number two punter is still going to be the guy booting it. Because Owen Thompson was in there, and then Adam Legere 
replaced him. Thompson does double duty, triple duty in various spots for the Owls. So Legere is the guy who's going to punt it away. And he takes a bouncer. Boots it, though. Fair catch is called. Not given a lot of breathing room was Lagarde there, who returned one earlier for a touchdown. But he seriously wasn't given a lot of breathing room by Luke Krause. So it'll be first and ten for the Wolves, who are firmly in control, 42 to nothing. Keon Jones has come in as the QB. As Gillard has done his work. Keon, a junior from Mount Vernon, New York. It's carried by Cameron Hall. Three yard game. Second and seven to go. Be second and seven after that carry. Deion's pass incomplete. We got a flag down. Two receivers, two defenders, flag down. Ball's going to get placed at the ball's going to get placed at the 46-yard line. After that penalty against the D of the Owls, the passing play. So the ball's at the 46, and another first and ten for the Wolves. And it's going to be a delay of game on the offense. Here's what you don't want in the last eight minutes of this puppy. You don't want it to become Flag City. But it happened here. With 8.06 to go. We've seen a Westfield flag followed up by a flag against the Wolves. West County will put it on the ground here, get it back into Westfield territory with 7.55 to play. Cameron Holmes out there. Helping out with the running game. And he gets stopped almost immediately this time. Ball be placed at the 48. There'll be a loss on the play unless they give him the, the spot back at the line of scrimmage. No. They're putting it at the 48. It's a loss. So a third and long coming up here. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Westfield trying to bring the full body package. Keon's pass, though, low and incomplete. 
intended for So on the fourth down, Wolves will punt it. Pamakala back at his own 35. Sends this one that's going to bounce and take a favorable bounce for the Owls. It bounced in a crowd and ended up going back across the 40 of Westfield up to the 43-yard line. Well, the band had run through its repertoire, so they had to play Sweet Caroline sometime because we need to keep the longest running stupid song in full earshot of everyone at Westcon Games. Thank you to the Spirit Band for keeping the streak going, and thank you to the Wolves for putting the pressure and the heat on. And man, oh man, I don't care if they're coming in in a reserve role today. They're all playing inspired football. A fumble recovered by the Wolves. Bing, bang, boom. No doubt about who is coming away with it. No doubt about it. So it's going to be first and 10. De Costanzo. Pass complete up to Zach Soriano. Advances it seven yards. Second and three. Keon Jones is the quarterback now for your Wolves. Out of Wilton, getting the job done. Second down and three. Keon throwing on the run. And that one, a bouncer. Incomplete. A hold against the Wolves. It's going to be a penalty. Stop at a clock. 5.49. Ball's going to move back. We'll end up around the 39-yard line. And create... Second and 13 at least, at least. Pitch right side. They'll get back five or six runs right, five or six yards right here on the run. Third down and eight. Three receivers right, one left for Jones. Keon trying to avoid the pressure, wings it, and that one gets knocked down. Oh my, in a crowd. But it may have been knocked down by a wolf. Either 
A, trying to save it from getting picked off, or B, because it was going to be an awkward attempt at a catch. So you got a fourth down and eight. Clock stopped with five minutes to play in the game. 42 to nothing. Wolves lead the Owls. So we, we, we had a penalty called on the play. Oh, that's shocking. It's going to bring the ball back near midfield. Fourth and 23 to go. No, it should be third down. It's got to be third down. If they took the penalty, it's got to be third. Okay. I mean, these penalties are bad, but let's not let's not chintz them it down. It's Keon trying to get around everybody. That's not going to happen. Basically, he makes it back to the line of scrimmage. Now it's fourth and twenty-three. And Tyler Cooley, who's had a very busy day on defense, in on the stop right there. And Pomacala should be punting away. Foley or Julian Deep? It's Julian Deep. And uh, this punt, not pretty. In fact, it goes back behind the line of scrimmage. Well, we've seen a lot of things during the course of this one. Coming up on four minutes. There you go. Don't you know? Owls take over at the 45 of the Wolves after that mm, kind of punt. Down to the 40. They're able to zip it. Four yards. Second and six. Ryan Scott, and sophomore out of Dalton, Mass. One of those multi position guys. Two receivers right, one left. And Scott, the third QB, utilized in this contest by the Owls. Sent it off left side on the ground. Black will continue to run. It'll be a third down and a long two. Okay, two receivers right. One yards. left. Pretty Take stacked line. We'll try to push it forward with Smith. He'll get the first down and more. Get it close to the 30 for the Owls. Stops the clock with 2.46 to play. Some bodies were down ever so briefly for Westfield. Two receivers right, one left. Full house backfield. First and ten for the Owls. Smith stopped at the 30, pickup of one and a half. Do we have a flag or we just got a body down? We do have a wolf down that stops the clock with 209.
Well, it'll be a get up of, of your own accord type of deal. Result from the previous play was a one yard gain. Second and nine for the Owls. Corey Teehee. Able to leave the field okay, so we hope the best for him. Smith again takes well, the they three. don't get to spin it for Seven much yardage on, on that play to the Owls. Clock will continue to run a minute 40 to go. And they are faced with a third down and 11. Right around their own 33 yard line. Yeah, between 33 and 32. So. Again, they'll try to run it around the right side. Not get much, maybe to the 29, a pickup of three on the play. So it's going to be a fourth down. We have 50 seconds to go, and they've got no points. They'll obviously go for it here to try and break up the shutout or at least try to keep this drive going. Three receivers left, one right. For their third quarterback in this contest, Ron Scott, his pass, is it complete? Looks that way at the 15-yard line. So they'll pick up the first down. Owen Thompson, who had been doing double duty as a receiver and a punter. Makes that catch right there. With 25 seconds to go. They'll call a timeout. They'll have a first and 10 coming up. They haven't had a lot of positive things happen to them in this game, Westfield State. This mini drive here after a mm, punt. Might end up being their best moment depending on if there's a end zone outcome. So Ryan Scott, sophomore quarterback. Has two receivers right, two receivers left. First and 10 at the 15 of the Wolves. He drops back, feels some heat, rolls right side, throws on the run, and it's picked off! Or was it? Did it get dropped, or is it a clean pickoff? I believe it's a clean pickoff, my friends. And if anything came loose, it came loose on hitting the ground. after the whistle blew. So, it's going to be an INT. Try Papa Cow. On the Picaruti of Scott. It's going to put the ball at the, what, one or two yard line. But you know, all you got to do is take some knees. You don't even have to step back. Sixteen seconds on the clock. The Wolves on their way to evening their record. At one and one, and starting off conference play at one and zero. Oh. 
This timeout being called here. I believe it's being called by the Wolves. Yeah, because you, you really, can't, if you want to keep the goose egg, you can't really just take a knee. You got to push it forward if you want to try and keep the shutout. They just push it up the middle and get to run the clock out. So they they don't take the knee and give up the shutout. They push it forward in that regard. To me, it's a choice I'd make every time. And so this one will end up 42 to zip. The Wolves, even in their record of one and one, the Owls dropping to 0 and three on the season. Lots of positives after a penalty riddled first quarter and a half in this one. Wolves really found their way in, on all units. Defense did a marvelous job. Offense got cooking. And special teams. Extra special. Giller, the QB, 14 to 26. Yeah, he got picked once, but two TD tosses. They threw for 217 yards. Jones relieved him. Blasky, the master Blasker. 178 yards and two touchdowns. And receivers, well, at least seven receivers tonight for the Wolves, including an 80-yard receiving night for Julian Ferguson, who had a touchdown reception. And that's not forget the bomb to Deshaun Allen for 34 yards. Only catch of the night, but it went for a score. And then as far as the opposition, uh, no, even before that, let's let's special teams and, and give props to the work that was done tonight by the special teams unit. And not just talking the, the touchback kicks and all that sort of stuff. Uh, even though we had a little trouble with the lights, you, you really have to admire the work that was done. Serge Lagardere uh, with a 65-yard punt return for a touchdown. And just the good work that was done overall. I know, a couple of moments here and there. A punt that bounced the wrong way. Maybe you cannot. You can't be too picky. Don't be too picky. The guys, guys worked it and worked it hard. For the opposition... Uh, they used three quarterbacks on the night, and none of them able to get into the end zone. Turnovers ended up being a big thing uh, for their team. So they fall to 0-3. Not much more to say. Outside of the final is 42 to zip. Lots of action here tomorrow. Bart Pasterna for the media services crew saying good night from the WAC. This has been Westcon Football.